we have a phone call with Gus Manger, which is the guy that provides tips on our our investments. The sun was setting over Holsword. I was in my office working on the preliminary details that Sierra sent over about the curriculum. The phone rang and I picked it up. Mr. President. Oh, it's Olivia. That's, that's our receptionist. Mr. President. Yes, what is it? Mr. Manger is on the line, sir. He said it's about an investment. Excellent. Connect him through. As you wish. A momentary crackling noise indicated the line change. Mr. Manger, to what do I owe the pleasure? Mr. President, as your secretary might have informed you, I'm calling about what we discussed at the party. I'm honestly very glad that I have decided to attend to Mr. Vice President's little gathering. A very enjoyable party turned out to be even more enjoyable with actual results out of it. And let's hear the results. Well then, I'm very happy to inform you that your investment to procure the vineyard in Ellery has been accepted by the current resident. You are now the owner of a lovely vineyard, a beautiful villa, and a sizable land. As mentioned before, there might be some cost relating to refurbishing the wine making equipment, however, the facilities are there. I will have the deed and the key sent to you immediately. Congratulations are in order, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Manger. It wouldn't be possible with without you. Thank you, Mr. President. You are too kind. I'm looking forward to more successful ventures we might do together in the future. Thank you for your time. Let me know if there's any other opportunities. Of course, I will be in contact. Have, have a good evening, Mr. President. The line dropped. Okay. Lobby the assembly. The administration can start a lobbying effort to sway votes. Oh, come on then. Chief strategist Lucian Gallard has prepared a well-planned lobbying effort in Parliament which would specifically sway on the fence MPs for the upcoming constitution vote. The plan includes lavish parties, gifts and even some political favours. Should we go ahead with the plan? No. No. We can't. We've come this far. We can't go with Brian. This is only ever going to cause you problems. Lucian Gallard. I don't think we need it. No, I'm not bribing them. Fuck that. I think I th you know what it is. T tell you why. I Bribery is such a short-term, short-sighted way of doing things. Because at the end of the day, if we don't have the MPs on our side willingly, it's not going to last, is it? This is only going to be, it's only going to ever work in the, 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 the short term. Because the MPs are only going to be there as long as the bribes are. And as soon as that money starts to drop off, they're going to turn against you anyway. No, I'm not bribing them. Sorry, bros. That ain't me, son. Nationalise the big four now. They want to nationalise all the big companies. Privatisation is the future. Big win for science as rain forces schools to evolve. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I forced creationism out of bandit. Only evolution will be taught in schools. Okay then, looks like we're on the next chapter. Victim of changes. Oh, is this where we get to see the... What we've caused. All of our results. We need some, we need some concrete good news. World ignores the blue dish plate. Yeah, I'm sorry, like, but the blue, now it is like. Barred from high paying jobs, discouraged from attending university, spatting in the streets. Blue dish, blue dish swords have been treated as lesser beings with the law still allowing rampant discrimination from businesses and educational institutions. We call on the international community to raise, raise awareness of this tragedy so that we can begin promoting equality among all sort of citizens. I do believe in equality, but at the moment, as much as it pains me to say, it's not my priority. Valgish man shot after burning Agnolian flag. 
Harsh times. A call from Mr. Coronti. Mr. Coronti, I was in my office looking through the agenda for the upcoming meeting at the Ministry of Economy. The meeting was going to be about ownership of the big four, the four largest companies in Sordland. Art of Sordland, Berger Steel, Sordish State Corporation and the Nedham Mining Group. Some of these companies were controlled in part or entirely by the state. The others were mostly completely privatised. Hmm. I had the power to change that. The phone rang and I put the agenda down. Now if I'm honest, this is far beyond anything I understand. This is far beyond my expertise, so I'm going to have to listen to ev everything my advisors tell me. Pick up the phone. I need to know the impacts. Greetings Mr President, it's been a while hasn't it? Let me try to remember, when was the last time we had a chat? Why well, remember, it was in Conriat when you, refru you refu uh, refused my gracious offer. Yeah, that's right. This guy, what did he want? I forgot what he wanted, but I upset him. For a good reason. That's right, he was asking too much. Well, we are both adults here. I'm sure we can let the past be the past and focus on the future. Although this time I'm talking about the short term future. Your upcoming ownership meeting, for example. But before we move on to that, he is the chairman of the HOS. Part of Swordland, okay. I can't help but mention the tax breaks, Mr. President. They have been extraordinarily beneficial to our quarterly performance. HOS is now operating on a much higher revenue pool. You have successfully strengthened the backbone of the Swordish economy. Needless to say, I still expect you to reinvest any surplus back into the economy to create more jobs. Increasing our investments inside Swordland is a key topic in our board discussions. He paused for a few seconds. Out of goodwill, I will share a key piece of information. The Lothberg Group has contingency plans if you decide to do anything rash that would disrupt their empires. Founded by Noel Tusk. So that, oh, that's Walter Tusk's brother. Yeah, the grandson of Noel Tusk, officially Lothberg, has no clear structure or leadership. Right, so what does this mean? You can't blame them, can you? Imagine someone trying to take your authority and personal wealth away without your consent. We'll only ask for a reasonable share, nothing out of the ordinary. That is good to hear. If everyone plays their cards right, it will be fine. Now, let's talk about those cards. Since the start of your campaign, you've wisely committed to a market economy. Judging by that, I'm sure you are looking into privatising some of the companies that are currently state-owned. I believe therefore that privatising both Nedham Mining Group and the Sordish State Corporation would be in both of our interests. After all, I am considering buying stocks in both companies. Ah, I bet you are, you dirty bastard. Privatising both might be too much. I'll see what I can do. Think about it this way. It's another step forward in strengthening our economy. Please at least think about it. He clears his throat. I will be blunt. Mr. Tusk is unfit to be the spokesperson for the Lothberg Group. His archaic thinking has only preserved a status quo that benefits himself and precious few others. Well, he's just a spokesman. He's generally regarded as the leader of the Lothberg Group, okay. His archaic thinking has only preserved a status quo that benefits himself and precious few others. It is high time something changed. Who do you have in mind to replace him? Who do you think? Me, of course. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Yeah, is what I propose, a win-win situation. If you promised me a majority of shares from the privatisation, he would lose considerable power, which means I could take over. 
If I take over with your help, I will be forever indebted to you and support you in all your goals. Be the re-election or something more. How does that sound? I'll have to think about it. Perfect. Just think about it, that's all I'm asking. I'm keeping my options open. I'm not going to turn them down at the minute, because if I do so happen to do that, then I'll get him on my side, but I don't think I am. They, these... These... Things have got nothing really to do with me. I've got no interest in this. That's about it. That's all I'm asking. Well then, I've taken up enough of your time today. This has been a productive call. Well, I don't think it has currently because I think you're a cocksucker. So... Thanks, Marcel. Goodbye, Mr. Coronti. After a couple of minutes, I went back to reviewing the agenda. So he wants us to privatise this and give all the shares, allow him to buy the majority shares, cutting Walter out. Phew, that's fucking brutal, that. That is business. General staff negative reaction. Well, we knew this. Earlier this week, the general staff had a, held a meeting in which Iosef Iosef Lancia had voiced his concerns about the administration. According to rumours, Lancia said, if this president doesn't demonstrate the leadership that Sordon needs both domestically and abroad, then it is time for a new person in the Maroon Palace. The sooner the better. The fate of our republic depends on it. Mate, you didn't know what you're fucking talking about, but you're entitled to your shit opinion. Request of meeting of Lucien Gallard. Lucien scheduled some time with me to discuss the potential political repercussions of the upcoming economy meeting. He arrived on time as usual and took his seat right across from me. Good morning, Mr. President. Lucian had dark circles below his eyes. The plethora of political developments must have been weighing, and weighing even on a workaholic like him. You look a bit tired. Are you getting enough sleep? I am trying to, sir. Very well. I booked some of your time to pre-plan for today's meeting at the Ministry of Economy. We need to be cautious. Any grand plans about the economy also heavily influences our political standing. We would be changing our relationship with the old guard, the oligarchs and the opposition. As you know, this meeting will give you the opportunity to alter the ownership of the big four, the largest corporations in all of Swordland. The old guard is a group of influential individuals in the government. It's an urban myth. But it's, it's like the fucking Illuminati, in it. We can start the process of nationalisation or privatisation, or we can just keep the status quo. Again, I remind you that any changes will tip an already fragile balance. I personally think we should stay out of this and keep things as they are. There is no need to make new political enemies at this stage in our term, but ultimately the decision is yours. What are you leaning towards? How should we move forward? Hmm. I don't know, mate. I don't know what I. I, I don't know what the, what's the benefits. What you know what I mean? So what do these do? Rumours mention that certain key organisations harbour the leaders of the faction. It's commonly agreed that they were installed during the Sol era as a security mechanism. Ah, a wide deep state that controls the state apparatus. These are the people that are part of the in the government. That sounds like corruption to me. I think I'm going to privatise. I'm going to privatise. 
I have to ask why, what is your intention? Privatisation will help bring the country out of recession. That may certainly be true, but taking everything out of state hands may have dire repercussions in a country like ours. We need to tread carefully. One thing to remember is that since you've been transparent about promoting a market economy, privatisation will not cost as much support. I received a report from the Ministry of Economy that may impact your decision. Unfortunately, we have missed our government budget targets for the current quarter. The plan to change the ownership of important assets could help us generate much needed resources to further improve economic development before the next ele election. It's just something to consider as our relationship with the oligarchs. Yeah. We need to remember that they only care about their own profits. Unfortunately, we aren't on good terms with them. This situation has been obstructing some of our efforts with the economic recovery. However, if we implemented a privatisation plan, they would surely be delighted. Still, we need to make sure that we don't go overboard with it. If we do, we might lose our base both in the USP and among the people. If we privatise only a part of their companies, perhaps we can get out of this unscratched, do you think? That would certainly be a wise compromise. Some of my connections indicate that there seems to be a contest for leadership in the Lothberg group. That is right. It looks like Marcel Caronti is making moves to become the key figure. Caronti probably wants his father's seat as the head of the group, and Tusk doesn't want to let go of it. If a significant power struggle considering sorry, it's a significant power struggle considering these are the heads of Sordon's two largest private corporations. If we over privatise our state owned companies, the Sordish State Corporation and the Nedder Mining Group, it could result in the balance tipping to one side. They would fight over buying up shares and cause chaos. Since you have already made the decision to privatise, you need to be decisive in your follow up actions. Did Marcel or Tusk contact you? I received a call from Marcel. What did he ask for? He wanted to make a deal to leave HOS untouched. And then? I said I'd think about it. Very well. Was that all he wanted? He also wants me to give him the shares from privatisation to lower Tusk's influence. As I expected. This internal conflict among the oligarchs puts us in an interesting position. Our relationship with Walter Tusk hasn't been good so far. Any move we make now has to be calculated and thought thorough. Lucian looked at his watch. Very well then, it's almost time. I will inform Mr Hall of your decision and he will make the necessary preparations to formulate a plan. Good, I need to give him all, the, all of the information because this plan's going to reflect that. I must get back to work now, see you at the next meeting. Thank you for your time sir. Lucian got up from his chair and left the office. You know what it is, right? We've just we I don't think we can upset Walter Tusk. Because we've just we just fucking We've just hired his bloody company to fix our fucking farming. Valgsland Navy active in the Marquian Sea. The Hazeland Island has been a disputed territory for many years. There's increased activities there. Illegal crossings rise at the Wayland border. Border police have reported an increasing number of arrests as bloodish and ways out refugees attempt to enter the country from Wayland. Temporary detention centres have been erected. Bloody hell. It is reported that in the villages around Usurian, a group of BFF missionaries are seeking to recruit militants to fight for the BFF. Governor Braun reported that the Gendarmerie forces in the area are now actively working towards eliminating the threat. The better be. I'm not having none of that on my soil. Ownership changes of major corporations, right? Lucian and I arrived at the Ministry of Economy. Assistants took our coats and showed us to the meeting room where Simon, Edith, Gus and Mikhail are waiting. As soon as I entered, their chatter stopped and they stood up. After a few pleasantries, everyone but Simon took their seats. He opened his briefcase, produced a folder and proceeded to go over some of the documents. Greetings everyone, welcome to the Ministry of Economy. Without further ado, we are of course here today to discuss our economic shift towards privatisation. Mikhail and Edith exchanged smiles. Mr President, before you arrived Mikhail and Edith 
we're expressing their delight at your decision to go down this path. Wonderful news, I'd say. I'm glad we're staying firmly on the path of market economy. This was certainly the right decision. It will boost our economy, put more money in circulation, and give the government much needed funds. It's a win-win situation for sure. I'm glad we are all on the same page. Certainly. Simon handed me and everyone else in the room two neat stacks of documents. Let's move on to how we can go about implementing a privatisation plan. Please turn to page 6. As you can see the document, the first company up for discussion is the Soda State Corporation. It's been around for over half a century. Most recently they have been hand handling a wide range of state construction projects. In their portfolio they have government buildings, various infrastructure projects, state libraries, embassies, basically anything government related. Privatising a company like this would certainly increase the government budget. That, of course, would result in lots of opportunities for us to provide for our citizens. The funds could also be used to boost our popularity, especially with the elections approaching. Not to mention the various other areas in which we can, can and should spend our money. However, there's one catch. Conservative majority of the USP would not like this decision at all. For them, these state companies are part and parcel of Swordish identity. If we privatise these companies entirely and sell too many shares in them, it will have consequences for us in the assembly. Right. What about selling the majority share? This is certainly a very good option. The state would keep some of SSC's operations under control and the government would have lots of gains. I'm leaning towards this option myself. Retaining control while increasing our budget, I don't see a downside. What about a minority share? It would be better than nothing, but why stop there? A minority state won't help our government as much. We need to be decisive. On the other hand, a majority share would create less friction. This would be my preference. What would the effects of fully privatisation? Tremendous amounts of money for the government. We can invest the money in future government projects, which would popularise our administration, increasing the chances for our re-election. The popularity might not make up for losing the lion's share of the Conservative vote. Hmm. Conservatives compromise the majority of the Assembly. If we hurt the national pride, they'll turn on us. I'm against full privatisation. We, should we, should, we shouldn't make enemies at this stage. Right, what's the next option? Page 26. The Mining Group. It's one of the largest mining corporations in eastern Merkoba, let alone Swordland. They call themselves the leaders of the world in coal. They certainly have enough evidence to back that up. Perhaps they're not as large as SSC, but we still have a lot to gain if Nether Mining Group is privatised. I fully support privatisation of, of this company to any extent. Certainly a good option to gain enough capital to end the recession once and for all. I have contacts in Nether. It's one of the most valuable corporations of the last decade. I can vouch for that. I have personal experience with the company myself. It would be a great addition to any portfolio. Right, what would happen if we fully privatise it? Very profitable sell. I know many people who would kill to have a portion of that company. I do think it's a good option. We could simply fully privatise NEDEM along with SSC to bring in a large influx of money of the government. Mr President, I hate to repeat myself but fully privatising one state owned company let alone two will anger our conservative voter base. All the budget in the world won't matter if you aren't re-elected. What about a majority share? My preference is selling a majority share of both the SSC and NEDM. It will give us the most value, I think we should go with this choice. This might still generate a backlash from the assembly and from the general public. We should go for a minority share instead. What about a minority share? Coupled with the minority share of SSC, that is the way to go. It would, however, be a lost opportunity. I think we should sell a majority share instead. Definitely not a bad idea at all. Right, I'm ready to make a decision. Right, let's have a look. So the SSC is a state corporation which stands as the largest construction company.
So this is what I've been recommended. This means it'll have a lot of budget to spend on other things. At risk of offending the conservatives. But I think it's worth the risk. Because remember we're trying to change the country here, we're not trying to change. We do want re-election, but this, I think this is important. So if they are, if we keep the majority state on, we're going to get a little bit of money. Hmm. What if I go majority state on for the Swordish? And we're going to root the biggest money because this. And we can privatise this industry. I'm going to go with the majority on the Soda State Corporation. I think that's going to cause us a little friction. But I'm going to go with the minority state owned on the, med on the mining group. So we'll get at least. We're covering all bases here. Yes. No, I'm not. I'm not sure. Hmm. Fuck it. I'm going to go my minority state owned for both. I'm privatising it. I signed the document altering the ownership of the big four with a flourish Simon leaned back in his chair. So, this is the pathway taken. I want to thank you Mr President. The decision will revitalise our economy. Although I wish we could have proceeded with privatisation in a greater capacity, it's a start. Certainly a step in the right direction. Parcel privatisation will still do damage to our conservative voter base but it's nothing we can't handle. I suspect that regardless we will lose the support of some conservatives in the assembly but the gains we will re receive will offset the losses make sure those gains happen as you wish i will not leave any stone unturned if you will excuse me i have to get back to work immediately there is much to be done lucian packed up his bag and started making his way to the entrance that will be it for today then i know everyone here has a very busy busy schedule thank you for coming Good work everyone. Indeed. I put the documents in my suitcase and left the room with Lucian. Nice, that gave us a two to government budget which is good. So really we got three budget out of that because I was in minus one. So at least we're in the positives. Come on, I need some more projects to boost the economy baby. Swordish arcades and joint drills at Ellery Air Base. Refugees suffer because of rain. Tensions keep rising in the Martian Sea. Now it is refugees are the least of my concerns. Unified Education Language Act. Well, we're already signing this. We've agreed to keep a um, sign it. Even though I would have signed this anyway, I've agreed to sign this to get somebody else's support. Section 1 enforces that the educational institution of Sodom will teach all classes except for foreign languages in the official language of the country unless they are given specific approval by the Ministry of Education. Universities, technical colleges and other schools that provide classes in any language other than Swordish will receive a suspension of operations until they apply for the approval process. Section 2 enforces the law through defunding penalties or total shutdown of schools sign. Done. Results of the economic direction. The privatisation process had begun and as I had expected, Sodland's two most prominent oligarchs wanted to speak to me about it. Lucian showed Marcel Caronti and Walter Tusk into the conference room. The two men sat across the table from me, leaving an empty chair in between them. Good to see you, President. It's been a while. Here, take this gift. <laughs> he brought out a bottle of Ellery Maroon 30-year-old. I heard Peter say that was your fa that you favour this one. Straight to business as always. As always. 
Marcel burst out laughing. Old man, you always think so small. You lack the vision to see the bigger picture. Marcel approached me and we shook hands. It's nice to see you, Mr. President. Here, a real gift. He took a set of car keys from his pocket and gave them to me. Come take a look. I looked out the window on the road leading to the palace. I saw a glittering brand new Randolfini sports car. A car that only the richest of the richest in Sodom could afford. It's yours. I can't accept a luxury car while the people of Sodland go hungry. Marcel shrugged. Suit yourself. Walter Tusk, little boy, do you think I can't do better? Me? Walter Tusk? Whatever you want, bribery won't work. This is absolutely no bribe, Mr. President. It's a simple gift, that's all. Really? A simple gift? I bet this has nothing to do with the recent privatisations. Anyway, gentlemen, please take your seats. They sat down, Lucian produced a set of documents from his briefcase he put on his reading glasses. So Mr. Tusk and Mr. Coronti, President Rain is about to sell private shares in Sodland's two largest national corporations, and now you're here showering him with gifts. You're both clearly more skilled at business than you are at subterfuge. But tell us, why do you deserve to claim these shares before they go to the general market? Walter clears his throat. President, listen. We, you and I, have been on the best of terms lately. But I want to nurture a profitable relationship between us where we both win. These shares are very important to me. If I had them, I could do so much more for Swordland. So much more for you. You haven't even seen what I and my connections are capable of. Do you want to get re-elected? No problem. I'll make sure of it. This is my offer to you. I will do whatever it takes to make you president for another term. Doesn't that sound great? What about you, Marcel? He can't do anything. He's not capable enough to. Mr. President asked me, not you. Before you spew those big words, make sure you can actually do it, Walter. Mr. President, first off, Mr. Tusk is lying about the extent of his influence. True, he might have command over some people in the assembly, but what he is sitting on top of right now was built by my father, Conranth Coronti. I want to be straightforward with you. If you give me the shares, I will topple this old man which means I will have the same influence he does over the assembly, I can sway them as you like. But that's not all, Mr. President. Don't forget that I have something that gives me an edge over this man and his archaic ways, a powerful tool. Control over the media. I can give you power over both the assembly and the Swordish public. Basically a guaranteed win. He could never ever hope to beat this offer. You little snake. You are 20 years early to be the head of Lothburg Group. I made this group what it is. Perhaps, but Marcel has a point, that's Lucian. What is the decision, Mr. President? Yeah, what's it going to be? Marcel leaned forward with anticipation. Hmm. It's such a tempting offer to sell these shares to Marcel. I'm just trying to think of the possible repercussions. The media is a massive, massive issue. Only the Swordland today I'm not that fucking bothered. You know what it is? I'm not in anybody's pocket. I'm sick of these shenanigans. You'll have to squabble over the shares when they enter the market just like everyone else. I'm tempted to say that. Or we could, if we equally distribute the shares, it might keep them both happy. And then I've got two allies and I'll not be making any enemies. 
<sighs> I'm gonna now what is I've decided I'm gonna do this. I wanna I'm going to make the shares be divided equally between the two of them. I see, so you decided not to pick a side. Although I would have preferred you pick me, I respect that. Likewise. No complaints here. Very well, here's the paperwork. Lucian put in a stack of papers in front of Marcel and Walter. He pointed to various sections and pages in the stock of papers. You will need to sign here, here and here. After the papers were signed, Marcel and Walter stood up. I think we all have very busy schedules. I will take my leave now. See you later, Mr. President. I will take my leave as well. The two men packed their belongings and left the meeting room. Yeah, I think... I think by doing that, we're not making any enemies. And as much as I wanted to sell them all to Caronti and have the media on my side, I've got to remember that Walter Tusk is taking care of my my um, infrastructure project, my production project. Um, I can't risk that. Right. Drive by shooting in Arvry. Rain determined to end recession. Yes, I am. What's next? Positive approval rating. Recent approval polling conducted by Chief Strategist Galad has shown that we have landed above the 50% approval rating. Our administration's performance has been confirmed with the diverse poll taken by a thousand attendees from all regions of Sorland. That's very, very good news. Assembly vote on the constitutional changes. Sega was driving me towards the Grand National Assembly for today's historic vote. It was a big day. I was thinking if my attempt of changing the constitution would end any differently than Alfonso's. I looked out the window as the noise of the city diminished and saw that we were already inside the territory of the palace complex. The palace complex was large housing the buildings of all government branches in the centre of Holsord. It was one of the biggest developments in Swordland. The Maroon Palace stood on a small hilltop surrounded by trees. We passed by the palace and entered the forest that divided it and the Grand National Assembly. We drove on the small road inside the forest, accompanied by the sound of birds and bugs coming from the tall trees. Are you okay back there, sir? Hey, Sergey. I'm okay. How are you doing today? I'm as good as I can be, sir. Sergey made a left turn out of the forest and entered the vast garden area of the assembly. Did you know that Mr. Tarquin's soul came to Hallsaw this morning? I've heard some politicians were talking about it today. Apparently this is the first time he's come into the city in the last five years. I thought he left the mainland and lived in Duru Island, never to, to return back to politics. But they were saying he might be here to exercise his member of honour rights for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's great, maybe I'll meet him. I'm sure you'll meet him, sir. If he's coming here after all these years, he would pay the president his respects. Do you think he's here about today's vote? Yes, Sergei. Most likely. Well, I'm sure he will support you, sir. Of course he will. Sergei drove inside the gates of the parkway and parked the car. We have arrived. Thank you, Sergei. Of course, sir. Good luck with the vote. I walked in on the white stone stairs of the Grand National Assembly. The entrance looked like a temple gate from the classical era. Inside were the vast corridors of wooden white stone. I joined with the crowd of people that were walking slowly towards the parliamentary hall. I noticed Lucian emerge from the crowd of packed politicians in front of me. He looked relieved when he saw me. Ah sir, there you are. Have you seen Mr Vice President? He's nowhere to be found. I've... I'm sure he's among the crowd somewhere. I hope you're right. But anyway, how about you? Are you ready to finally face the assembly sir? Lucian, I've just heard something worrying from Sergei. No need to worry about anything, sir. Come, we must go inside. We followed the crowd into the parliamentary hall. After we were inside, we were split with Lucian to take our designated seats. I went up the elevated platform overlooking the hall and sat down. I waited as MPs slowly started to gather inside the hall and take their places. After a while, I saw Gloria walk to her elevated seat at the centre of the hall. Now, Gloria Tory said we'd have her support, so let's see if she keeps her word. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. We'll shortly begin with today's agenda of USP's proposed changes to the Constitution of Swordland. After a short while, everybody was in their seats. According to the Constitution, the constitutional amendments require two-thirds of the members of the Assembly to vote in favour for it. 
If the vote succeeds, the proposal will be sent to the Supreme Court. The proposal in question includes these points. She started reading the proposal to the Assembly. First section of changes, Article 57, is the modified with the following. She continued reading the proposal. Section 2, paragraph 36, she went on, may not exercise his right to, and so on, the Justice of the Supreme Court. Most of the MPs seemed like they were already fallen asleep. A simple majority is considered. The seat was really hurting my back. <laughs> Section 4, paragraph 44, it felt like an eternity had passed when she finished reading the changes. I hereby invite all of you to vote. She struck her gravel down, which echoed in the hall. The sound made some MPs jump in shock as they woke up from their deep sleep. It will require two-thirds majority in favour for it to pass. You may now cast your votes. I felt the need to stand up and stretch. I looked at the hall from our elevated position platform overlooking it. Most members of the assembly got up from their seats and joined one of their many group discussions that emerged around the hall, while some immediately walked up to the ballot box to cast their votes. Go down to the hall where all the MPs are. As soon as I went down the stairs, Kibner approached me. Mr President, how are you feeling about the vote? Very positive. Good to hear, I'm sure we'll get through this. I'll now go and vote, see you after the vote. Suddenly he turned away from me and walked towards his seat. Then I saw Lucian waving at me, he was among a group of people in the corner of the hall, I walked up to him. On my way I bumped into Mousson Lek. Bludish descent, he's not gonna be happy. Mr President, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. He gave me a cold stare, excuse me. He straightened his tie and walked away. I finally finished my walk towards Lucian without further interruptions. He was in a conversation with a member of our party. He looked at me when he saw me approach. Sir, did you vote yet? We have to be quick. What's the rush? I'll explain on the way. I signed my vote and prepared the envelope, together with Lucian. When we walked to the centre of the hall to cast our votes, he kept rushing me throughout the process. Gloria bowed her head slightly in respect after she saw his vote. Lucian pulled my arm and whispered in my ear, Mr President, there's an issue. Talk when Sol is here. I know. You have to accelerate the voting. We need everybody to vote as soon as possible. We don't know what we can pull off right now, but if the members of the assembly see him, he might influence them against the proposal. We should make the people vote now. Yes sir, but how? Go and ask Gloria to speed up the voting. She hit her gavel two times and awaited a few seconds to allow time for the gavel sound to fill the room with its echo. Ladies and gentlemen of the assembly, we will soon start the count and please cast your votes if you haven't already. The pacing in the hall definitely increased, the groups dispersed and MPs came to the box to cast their votes one by one. Suddenly Lucian pulled me back. Sir, what do we do? He pointed at the back of the assembly near one of the exits. When I looked closely I saw Tarquin Sol sitting at the very back. He looked like a shadow of his past. Old age seemed to get to him, but he still had the same charisma. Some MPs had already gathered around him in own respect. The assembly gradually went quiet as people started to notice Tarquin Sol's presence in the hall. I'll go and talk to him. We should refrain from giving him the spotlight and recognition he expects. Maybe you can address him after the vote. After I was t talking to Lucian, I spotted Kibana walking to the back of the hall towards Tarquin Sol. He bowed in front of Sol and gave him a military salute. Seeing this, more people started to approach him. Suddenly Gloria came up behind us. Gentlemen, why don't you go back to your seats and not stand near the ballot box? Let's follow the procedures. Oh by the way, we have 251 members today. The member of honour is here and has already cast his vote. Did he now? So Miss Gloria, how many votes are missing? Only a few. Alban Calvin and three other men approached us with envelopes in their hands. Now this guy promised me his vote. And these must be them. Good day to you gentlemen, Madam Speaker. Good day, Mr. Calvin. I'm sorry to take so long, Mr. President. There was a friend who needed more clarification for his vote. Good. He gestures at the men behind him. Let's get this over with, gentlemen. They went ahead and casted their votes. Let's win this, Mr. President. He walked to his seat with a fist in the air. Let's have you two back at your seats as well. All right. We both went back to our seats when I returned back to the elevated seats of the Council of Ministers. I saw Peter sitting in the chair next to mine. Did you cast your vote? Yes, of course. 
He looked at Gloria as she and her assistants counted the votes, the speaker's seat was only a few metres away from our platform. I really hope this proposal goes through. It will. Let's see. He tried to get Gloria's attention by waving at her. How many left? Gloria looked at Peter, she looked annoyed. It's looking pretty good, 20 more votes to count. Peter turned to me. Thank God. That's great. Peter pointed at where Kibner was sitting. Maybe it was a good idea to ally ourselves with Mr. Kibner. It's not over yet, Peter. Let's not get overexcited. Well, suddenly Gloria's loud gavel echoed in the hall, which made everyone watch her attentively. The voting has been concluded. Fuck. I feel like I've got butterflies in my stomach. I was anxious to hear the results. The proposal has 179 eyes and 72 nays. That means we've got it. Thereby, the Grand National Assembly has surpassed the two-thirds majority and accepted the changes to the Constitution. Fucking have some of that. The proposal will be presented to the Supreme Court shortly for the final voting procedure. The Assembly roared with all kinds of different reactions. Yes, we did it. Hell yeah, we did. Well, wait there, not so fast. We still have the court to pass. The MPs kept shouting in the hall among them. I heard friends Richter. Yeah, this guy's a fucking arsehole. I knew he's got a, a negative vote, but he can go and fuck himself. Suddenly, I noticed Tarquin Sol slowly stand up from a seat at the back. He was seemingly struggling and using the help of his cane. When he stood up, his gaze wandered the hall as all of the members of the Grand National Assembly went silent. Keep watching him. He walked out the exit as two men held the doors for him. Peter Vecna, thank God he didn't do anything. In any case, the proposal has passed the assembly and now we have to think about the Supreme Court. A sorrow hawk will be a problem. I'll talk to the key figures of the court will be fine. I have complete trust in you. After I talked with Peter about the vote, we both left the hall to discuss our next steps. We waited for Sergei by the entrance. <laughs> oh, that is a big victory. Just as the Supreme Court now and they're not going to want to be happy about this because we're going to cancel them out. <sighs> Meeting on the results of the assembly vote. Lucian, Peter and I convened on the most massive balcony of the palace. It was nice to catch a breeze in the increasing summer heat. Both had grins on their faces, but Peter's got larger as he kept congratulating me on our success in the assembly. Fellas, the first obstacle had been cleared. Congratulations to all of us. We can celebrate once we get past the court. Mr. President's right, the assembly was the easy part. Peter leaned on the balcony railing. What about Tarquin Sol? Did you see him again? As far as I know, he's still staying in Hullsword, but he hasn't cared to pay his respects to the president yet. What the hell was that all about anyway, him appearing out of nowhere? He just joined a constitutional vote. I think it's perfectly normal he, came, normal he came out for this. What do you think was his real intention? He wished to intimidate the assembly into rejecting our proposal, sir, and it seemed to have failed, but we can't be sure. He might be here to work with the court. Yeah. As long as he's around, he will always have influence over the republic he built. We should have seen this coming. But he has no authority anymore. Well, the laws protect him from almost anything and allow him to be a member of the assembly. He can still propose bills and vote for them. I'd call it proper authority if you ask me. When you are the founder of the system, you don't need to be sitting in the presidential office to have the power. Lucian's right, he already showcased his powers at the vote. We must be careful. We must be careful indeed. With him around, we have to be extra careful. We cannot let the party slip away from our hands. We must plan our next steps. Of course, sir. Yeah, we have the first obstacle cleared, but next we have a council of old grumpy men in our way. I have to say, it's a nice description for the court, but unfortunately for us, they're more than that. They're our biggest trouble yet. Also, you're forgetting about our grumpy Miss Edmonds. They're not all grumpy men. <laughs> and Miss Morgana. She's technically a member too. That's right. Wait, did you just call Nia a grumpy old woman? He laughed. Lucian looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Anyway... He cleared his throat. About the court. 
Miss Morgner has been reluctant to help with the lobbying of the court, but she has accepted to at least try and convince the justice to organise a meeting with us, which means our lobbying efforts did not bear any fruits yet. It will be up to Miss Morgner, sir. And Nia was pretty adamant about her position against the proposal. That's already one loss out of eleven. I can't let her sabotage our efforts. She's a minister of my cabinet. She will vote for it. I don't know about that, Anton. You have to convince her yourself if you can. Not to make it sound more depressing, but it's only about her. Let's not forget about Orso and his loyalists. That means we have already lost at least four to five votes from the start. Yes, we'll need to reach out to the old guards and the moderates in order to reach six votes. There's not much leeway. If the reformist judges are against us along with the old guard, how do we even get six votes? It's a tough spot to be in, as I said. We have no other way but to convince the old guards behind Orso's back. We may need to take some extreme measures though. Hey, we won the vote comfortably. I'm sure that changed their minds a little. There's at least some pressure on them now. The court will see us as a threat, they'll not be persuaded so easily. I'll talk to the justices and convince them. I believe in you, sir. In any case, we should start with our best bet. We've already asked Nia to arrange a meeting with Miss Edmonds. She's willing to speak with you. That's a good start. If she's willing to start talk, she's willing to cooperate. How about Heron Garsai? He rejected to speak with us. He rejected to speak with you, Peter. But if the president can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, I'm sure he'll open up. Lucian suddenly turned and pointed at the side of the doors to the balcony. Look who's coming. It was Kibina. He slowly walked up to us with a smile on his face and spread his arms as wide as he approached us. Here you are, the dangerous men of the Maroon Palace. Afternoon, Mr. Kibner. Damn right we're dangerous, Cassaro. Welcome, Mr. Kibner. How are you doing? I'm good, Mr. President. You must be feeling good as well. There was a strong cooperation in Parliament. Cassaro squinted at the bright sun. God damn this son. He reached down in his pocket, fumbled with a pair of sunglasses and set them on his nose. Did you fellas figure out the court situation? Most of them have been resting, resisting our efforts, but we're working on it. it. It's not looking good? We'll figure it out Mr. Kimner. I'll be talking to several of the justices very soon. I see. Well, I hope you do something about it. It's not like the justices are big fans of the administration. Anyway, I'll leave you three to whatever you were conspiring before I came. The hee is killing me. We should catch up soon. He walked back at the door and left the balcony. Look at him go, that man. I don't trust him. He wants to take credit for the new constitution. If it passes, that is. He can see that in his dreams. Whatever you say, we need Kasaro on our side. Can't object to that. Lucian looked at his watch. I think it's time to conclude our meeting, sir. There was a tap on my shoulder. Livia Suno joined us on the balcony. Pardon the interruption, gentlemen. Mr. President, David Whiskey is calling about the upcoming foreign policy meeting. Perfect timing. Tell him I'll be right, be I'll be right there. I will, sir. She turned to leave the balcony, then back to us. Congratulations on the victory, Mr. Rain. Peter? She looked at Peter in the eye as she said this and ignored Lucian altogether. Peter's eyes followed her as she walked out. Oh, you aren't shagging my secretary, mate, are you? Getting pretty hot out here. Okay, let's call it finished. You may go both go. Alright, gentlemen, see you later. They both left. Right, lads. We had great success there. We've got a couple of things we can do next episode. Movie premiere. Roomberg Whistleblower. Right, let's read this report first. Kibner congratulates vote results. In today's press statement, Kibner of the NFP congratulated President Rain for the successful vote. In a speech, he showed support for the USP leadership and called the Supreme Court to vote in favour of the proposal. Here, yeah, I know it is. I'm quite proud of myself. I managed to get the majority vote, the two thirds. 
without resulting to outright bribery. Um, don't get me wrong, I have promised a few things. I did let the the guys when I privatized my companies have first dibs and split the shares 50-50 but that's because I didn't I need their support regardless I've got to keep them sweet to a certain extent without promising them anything and I've been able to get through the game so far without making promises and doing whatever I want which is keeping people sweet okay lads well wait there let's check the the news constitutional changes passed by the assembly Kibna congratulates president passes the assembly right lads we'll call an episode here when we come back we'll see what this whistleblower thing is and we'll go to the movie premiere hope you enjoyed the episode see you in the next one lads